If you have ever wondered what's going on with Pokemon Go in Japan, you're in the right place. This is Inside Japan. Pokemon Go first started in Japan a little while after it did in the US. This was due to prevent server issues that plagued the US servers because more people than expected started to play the game. It was not long after that Pokemon Go took the world by storm. Since then, the number of players has decreased on a global scale, but there are still many people who play today. In Japan, there are a few people who can be seen playing here or there. It is only when there is an event that we can see all the Pokemon Go players or trainers come out of the woodworks. Most people who don't play Pokemon Go are usually curious about what's happening because they see many people grouped together in random areas on their phones. In this video, we're going to focus on many of the summer events that are taking place in Japan. The next Pokemon Go event is a chance to catch the Pokemon Unknown. This event takes place from July 26th to the 29th. One way to get this rare Pokemon is to go to your local McDonald's in Japan with the McDonald's Japan app. There's a special coupon for the Loco Moco Burger meal for 700 yen. After purchasing this meal, you will receive a ticket with a QR code. With this QR code, you will have the chance to unlock unknown at Pokestops located at participating stores on a specific date. Since the tickets are limited, you might want to check to see if they still have any in stock before purchasing your meal. The following weekend on Saturday, August 4th is the next event which happens to be a Community Day event. This Community Day event is to make up for the postponed event in July. This event is special because there are two special Pokemon that can be caught. From 12pm to 3pm, Pokemon Go trainers can participate in raid battles for chances to catch shiny Articunos. From 3pm to 6pm, trainers can possibly find and catch Squirtles with sunglasses. Just in case you're new to Pokemon, this is a reference to the Squirtle Squad. Since this event is so long, trainers might want to make sure they have a plan to deal with the heat as well as being able to manage their battery life for any and all devices they use to capture Pokemon. The following weekend, a rare turn of events will happen. Pokemon Go trainers in Japan have two community day events in one month. This second event is even more special because it's not really a community day, but more like community days. This event is a two-day event. This is most likely because of the Pokemon that is featured for this event. Trainers will have a chance to catch shiny Eevees. Since there are many Eeveelutions, trainers have two days to catch as many Eevees as they can to try to get them all. Currently, there are only six Eeveelutions in Pokemon Go. Eevee, Vaporeon, Jolteon, Flareon, Espeon, and Umbreon. Sylveon, Leafeon, and Glaceon are still not available. Trainers might want to save up for when they are. On August 29th, the last Pokemon Go Summer Tour event will begin in Japan. This event is called Pokemon Go Safari Zone. August 29th is the start date, but it will end on September 2nd in Yokosuka City in the Kanagawa Prefecture. This event will take place specifically in three parks, Mikasa, Verney, and Kurihama. There, trainers can catch Unknown and Tropius. If any trainers want to participate in this event, they would need to sign up for it through the Koska City Special website, which is linked below. The last day to sign up for this is July 20th at 10 a.m. Japan Standard Time. If too many people sign up for this event, there will be a drawing for a 2D barcode that will be sent to the winners. Signing up for this event means that you can only participate in this event just for one day. If a trainer comes back on a different day with a different ticket, then that ticket won't work. Because Pokemon Go wants to celebrate this event, Feebas and Torchic will appear more in Japan. Wingle will also appear more worldwide. As mentioned before, the July event was postponed and it was for a good reason. This was due to the floods that destroyed many homes and took many lives in western Japan. This was the highest death toll in Japan due to heavy rainfall in over three decades. There are three ways you can help. One is to send things that people might need, but please be sure that someone is available to receive what you have sent. Since there's still many people trying to get a hold of the situation, many places don't have personnel to organize what you have sent yet. 
The second way to help is to volunteer. If you have the skills to help with these types of situations, then please feel free to volunteer. If you are inexperienced, then volunteering immediately might do more harm than good. There will come a time when you can volunteer. The third option anyone can do at any time, and that is to donate. There are links down below where you can help donate. If you have a Rocket 10 card, then you can even donate points. If you use LINE, you can donate through LINE. It is up to you how you want to help. This was Inside Japan, and thanks for watching.